cool welcome everybody so we're in land land in chicago um i'm not going to do a whole lot of talking because i'm going to let dan uh run the show <laughs> <laughs> cool um hey uh yeah this is our studio justin santor is usually right there um jessica siemens is usually in milwaukee but sometimes right there um, jessica deal is hiding up on the couch um that's the spot where i <laughs> crash out and sleep when it gets to be three or four in the morning and it doesn't make sense to go home. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. I will, I will give you guys a tour in chronological order of how we make things. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that happens is here's where all the drawings and stuff get made. Um, we can pop up here, I guess. Um, we built this loft in the studio to uh, house um, four foot by eight feet by 20 feet of stuff we don't need to get at very often. And then our, our print inventory, we work up here, perched like weird animals. Um, and uh, yeah, this is my my desk and my weird drawing area and um, a field notes collection. And this is the very messy extra desk, uh, the light table and cookies and uh, some records and things. Um, mm -hmm. let's see, so yeah, once we make all that stuff, um, here's our film printer. Uh, we used to use um, Kinko's and just print, print our positives out on uh, shitty paper. Um, and then we, we graduated to using film printers like everybody else on Earth, which um, is very exciting and awesome. <laughs> uh, our screens are here. Uh, we we kind of have that, that's like where they rest. That's their, their resting state. Um, when they're cleaned out and ready to go and everything, we bring them over here to the dark room. Um, there's another room we built, and it's it's like, I would say, five-sixths of the way finished. Um, but uh, we coat the, the screens here under the safe light and uh, keep them in this corner uh, safe from UV rays to expose them and they stay all soft and light sensitive and cool. Um, and then once that's done, we this is our multi-purpose multi um, exposure table work, work area. Um, we lay the positive down here. I can just grab one of those really quick. And, um, You know, you just set this down and then you set the screen on top and then weight it down with a whole bunch of uh, cinder blocks and things. And then when you turn that on, it exposes the screen. Um, it locks in all the parts that uh, that you want to block out the ink and it keeps the, uh, the parts that you want to print soft and, and water soluble. Um, so then once you've exposed it, um, you can take it over into the into our washout booth, um, which is over here. <laughs> it's a lot of running back and forth. It, it gets chaotic when uh, we're all doing different parts of this. But um, we bring the screens in here and then wash out the water soluble parts and create our stencil that way. Um, everything that's been baked in by the light stays hard and um, and it won't. Uh, that doesn't degrade until we spray it with a bunch of chemicals after we're done printing. Um, from there, the screen, and I'll just, uh, I'll grab one of these for demonstration. Um, the, uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, from there, we put the, uh, ever-growing mountain of test prints. Um, and then once this is in here, we're able to, you know, re register it to the, the paper and the, the press bed below. Um, tighten it in the clamps. There's, there are, Actually, I'll just go grab those. I'll be right back.
yelling. I'll put these on, but I'll uh, take them back off to cycle this through and show you guys what what that does. But this is a this is the flood bar, and this this guy's responsible for um, pulling the ink, the the blob of ink that we lay down, for for pulling that from the back of the screen all the way up to the front, so the entire thing is charged with ink. And then when the the squeegee comes by on the the downstroke, it uh, that that pushes everything through. I guess so. This is the squeegee, and it just um, oh, hold on. Um, and this just um, attaches here. And you just like center everything on the screen, tighten all your stuff, um, and at this point you you know you get the screen wet and, and lay down your ink and everything. Um, I will. I'm gonna pull these down so I can cycle it through. If if I do it dry, it'll probably screw up the screen. So are these steel or aluminum or um, what is these that? These ones are aluminum. Um, there are steel ones that you can get, and those are way way better. These things are really sensitive to to getting nicked, and if they if you nick them, they can do all sorts of terrible things. Like it, best case scenario, <laughs> a nick will um, will just kind of leave a weird streak on the in the ink because it's not pulling it evenly. Um, worst case scenario, you create like a weird burr, and then when the uh, the flood bar comes up or whatever, it, it tears your screen. Um, we've had we had problems with that in the past where it would just or <laughs> whatever something was going on with our flood bar that was breaking most of the screens that we would you know print with it and um, you just sit there with steel steel wool and file the thing down. Um, yeah so we try to be very delicate with those um, and the, the squeegee blade it, you know that's just it's it's a two different types of rubber um, there's a the outer rubber is is soft so it pushes it, it kind of like flexes to push a bunch of the ink through and then the middle rubber is is like a, a firmer harder one that that creates kind of like a forceful edge to to you know drive it in to create the uh, the precision that you need for good detail um, so this is kind of this is a triple durometer um, squeegee rubber and it, it's sort of like the best of both worlds um, do those wear down over time or they do yeah like they you want it to be a, as sharp of an edge as possible but yeah because of all the friction and all the uh, you know just all the work that we um, put them through they end up kind of softening and curving over and when that happens the the images they come out kind of blurry like that's a it's a problem, especially if we're printing half tones and stuff like it. It, you know, the ink spreads out a lot more than it would otherwise. Um, yeah, we actually, I can't track down a place in Chicago that sharpens these things, so we bring them back to Minneapolis and just have them sharpened there, like once, you know. Well, we've done it like twice in the time that we've been here, but um, yeah, that and we have a few different setups of, of these things that we can cycle through if, if something gets weird. Um, but yeah, pretend that those things are on here and we've got ink and everything. Um, this thing clamps back up and then, uh, you know, we would, we would run a few test prints through here uh, just for, um, to, to make sure that the ink is, is laying down smoothly and that there's nothing weird happening. Um, and sometimes to make sure that our colors are working out the way that we want them to. Um, this is a vacuum. It, sucks the, the paper down to the uh, down to the table, but we're not going to do that because it's loud and obnoxious. Um, you just power it on, and then bring that down. The, the squeegee, you know, pulls all the ink. You uh, you know, throw your print on the rack, get a new one set up, and then take it again. And you just cycle through until your giant stack of paper is is nothing. Um, and these res these tabs are the registration marks. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, yeah, we we put those down. I we try to be really good about making sure we're exposing the screens in the same. The positives are in the same relative place every time we do it. So by the time we get the screen locked in and everything, these tabs can just stay where they are, and the screens usually in the relatively like 
right position. I wonder if I can. Um, this is this might be trying to force a circle through a square hole, but I'll I'll show you how this lines up on a a screen that is not being used on this on a test print that has nothing to do with it. But um, let's see. So ordinarily, what we would do is line up these these little feet. Um, and yeah, they've. This is an older test print, so. Um, these two knobs here control the registration, and um, I do a lot of this kind of thing where I'll like pin, pin the, the screen down so that I can see the 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 feet moving underneath it. Um, and, uh, a little bit of that. This one moves everything side to side. So, in, in you know. In a perfect world, all this stuff would line up perfectly, but this test print's weird and old. And, um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of how the registration works. And then once we're printing, you know, we can, we can pretty easily see, you know, where, like, say, like on this one, um, you're seeing, like, where the, the shapes just aren't lining up or whatever. We can nudge the table you know, in any direction to, to kind of fit that. And then once, once it's all looking right, then we just lock it in. And almost all the time, the, the print, like it just stays where it needs to. Sometimes it'll drift a little bit and we can chase that. But um, for the most part, once we've got it all kind of locked in, it's good to go. Um, yeah. Um, and so then, say we printed or whatever, then we bring we would bring the screen and all the stuff back into the washout booth to clean it and reclaim it and and everything. And then the prints, the giant stack of prints. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, it's hard to remember this stuff in order when I'm not just doing it. Um, that would all come back over here. Um, just conveniently has a stack of prints that needs to get cut. Um, so. Yeah, we would bring the stack here, and then this is our, our giant hydraulic cutter. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I can, I'll make the first couple cuts on, on this just to show you guys what, what the deal is. Um, so we cut from the, the corner that we register to because everything um, stays in line from that corner out. The, the paper can be kind of odd sizes sometimes, so the, the far edges vary. Um, so. Let's see. Um, how are we for time, are we? It's a quarter till five. Okay. So we should be, we're yeah. good. Yeah. The, uh, the thing that um, is not evident is that the we have movers coming to, to deal with our apartment and uh, they're supposed to show up. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm gonna cut these up. These, these crop marks are not right, but I'm gonna cut them here anyway. Um, so we just put some. Uh, let's shift this. This is the these like kind of disposable plastic bars that the blade hits down on. Um, they can get deep gouges worn in them over time, and then your your cutter, the bottom of your stack ends up kind of being a little bit wonky. Um, let's see. We got this. This was yet another um, burlesque hand-me-down when they, <laughs> they upgraded their equipment and we, we ended up with uh, the one that they didn't want anymore. Um, which is great. Uh, um, it's it's done nothing but, but good for us. Um, so you set this down just to protect it. The, the clamp uh, brings down a whole lot of pressure, and it can leave indentations in your in your paper. And then uh, this will be loud, but uh, um, bring that down. And that. Um, yeah. In in a perfect world, these crop marks would be cut in half, but um, that's not actually what I'm cutting this print to because it's set up weird. But I would do that with all of these stacks, and then um, we have our like fresh 
stack of, uh, of cut prints. They would be beautiful. Um, we would put some here for an archive. Uh, well, first we'd go sign a number, all of them. But we put some on there for an archive. Um, the uh, the remainder of them um, ends up in one of these giant um, inventory flat file things. Stay flats. Um, this is all of our stock, and then that's our kind of road ready flat stock rig. Um, and we just kind of, as we run out of things in there, we pull them from here and, and add them to that. And uh, we pull mail orders from, from that stuff too. It just kind of keeps, it keeps it so that like by the time we need to hit the road, we have fewer steps to take. <laughs> um, this is also, our archive is back here. And uh, um, pretty much. Yeah, and, and you built all of these, right? All yeah, these we built all this stuff, yeah. Um, I, we had had, we used to have all this stuff kind of sitting in a shelf that was like, similar to that that one where um you know it was all in these stacks but you know putting putting like stacks of prints in, into these little slats or whatever like we'd end up nicking corners or like dealing with them so you know and then what would happen is we'd leave town and just end up putting them in stay flats anyway so it was like rather than put them in stay flats and then take them back out and put them on the shelf we just figured out a way to keep them in in these and they're they're protected and you know stay super safe and uh really easy to deal with um so as far as like additioning and signing and all that you pretty much just lay everything out on that table over there or yeah yeah so um yeah that just happens on here um and uh yeah we just we set them out in tens um we keep the like just the little spot where uh you know where the signature needs to go. We just lay them out in tens, and then we number them. And that way, by the time you get to the end of one of your sets of ten, if you've messed up the numbering, you know, like as as it happens on like a run of like you know nine hundred posters or whatever, um, you know, then you know where you messed up, and and uh, it's pretty easy to fix at that point. And then yeah, we just take we take them and then we you know divide them into stacks of twenty five. We have these plastic bags, uh, just bag them in twenty fives, and then. We've got a whole bunch of boxes and stuff above the cutter that uh, we pack them up in, or our copies end up in a stay flat until we release them online. And uh, yeah. You want to talk about the inks at all, or? Oh yeah, that's our wall of inks. <laughs> we uh, we're in the midst of switching over from Speedball to uh, TW. The TW inks are all the the kind of really boring looking uh, white white containers. Um, we're just. A bigger fan of the pigments that they use and the colors that they can get out of it. Speedball is great for um, entry level um, screen printing needs, I guess, and, and it did right by us for a really long time. But the the finish is weird, you know. Um, the black has been, and uh, really any dark colors that have been like scuffing on people's prints for yeah, as long as they've been making ink and they've been trying to fix it. Rumor has it they they've gotten close, but we kind of. Years ago, we just bypassed that by um, kind of kind of making like a weird blend of of a bunch of different inks and different finishes and stuff, so that we can um, have an ink that's like easy to work with and also has like the finish that we need and it's durable and it doesn't scuff. Um, but now we're just kind of switching over to to all TWs um, TW inks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We we mostly just buy process colors and mix what we need to out of that. You know, they make a whole array of, um, you know, specialty colors and stuff like that. But I don't know. We're still still baby stepping into it a little <laughs> bit. So when you're mixing colors, what do you? Where do you? I mean, is that what these little temporary containers are? Like the ones on the bottom shelf there? Um, is those, that colors that you've mixed and? Those are colors that yeah, pretty much like I mean, even the gallon ones are all colors that we've mixed. Um, those ones are really old actually they're kind of from when we used to mix really small quantities when we were doing runs of like 30 of something um, we'd mix that but now we just kind of mix whole gallons um, yeah we mix into gallons I guess we don't always mix like a whole gallon of ink but it's it's easier to make more of it and then we know that we have <laughs> like we, we know that we have those colors I guess um, 
do you find yourself coming back to those in later prints? Like kind of, yeah, yeah. We label, we try really hard to label all of the inks with, um, like, uh, um, like what the what prints they're from. So when we need to like do color matching or anything, we can just go to those prints mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, like I know I know that this is kind of like an off blackish brown. Um, we have some like this like this kind of thing happens where it's like. Um, you know, this was an ink that was used on an Alabama Shakes poster at one point in time. Um, it has, let's see. <laughs> um, and then it changed into being, uh, I think that's a fish Philadelphia? No, it's not. Um, I don't know, some Philadelphia print. It became <laughs> irrelevant because we mixed something else into it and used it for an actual fish poster. Um, and then... It, that got changed, just changed it. This is um, this is weird land land code for uh, the. This is Wanton Sea. Um, the uh, I don't know which variant it was. <laughs> I think it was the red one. I think this was like the red variant. Um, but um, that's a uh, yeah. So we just kind of add to it as as these other labels become Take irrelevant. Off. What? Take the lid off. Should we see what's in it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it looks like that. It looks like a uh, pea soup, kind of. <laughs> the films? Oh yeah. Um. So here's yeah. This is our drawer of uh, our drawer of films. The light table's probably good for this. Um, yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I need it. Um, let me see. I'll pull back to the... Oh, this will be good. I'll show you guys an example of something that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, for Jess's uh, Gremlins print, um, just ruining them. <laughs> um, so for these, I don't, uh, they're kind of labeled with the order, but um, yeah, so Jess, you know, she starts with a key plate, um, and then these are all the, the shapes, I guess, that, that, you know, make up the spot colors. Um, I love that this is like my handwriting and I have no no idea what that's referring to. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so this doesn't look like all of them are here, but you know, these are the different uh, different layers. Um, I can isolate just some of them. You can see. You know, start with something like that. This is actually the layer that goes down before it, but whatever. Um, you know, you get those to all line up, and then, you know, you have this combination where you end up with like the three colors. Like there's this one, and then the second color, and then the the bonus color that they make by being added to each other. Um, and there's, you know, another shadow layer that kind of um, darkens just the the parts that. Um, I guess that need to, need to get darkened. This is the, I think this was the black layer, and this is all that really, in that whole print, this is all that's really black. Like, she did the border, and then just these little accents. Um, on there. Oh, they, the key plate's a different thing, but, um, but yeah, that, once that's lined up, that, that'll build. This is a really bad example, because it was like a 12 or 13 color print, <laughs> and uh, um, we're only seeing half of it, but that's, yeah, that's like a, I don't know. For some reason we keep all of our films. Um, 
mostly I think we're still like coping with the fact that we're not using recyclable paper and now it's a bunch of plastic. Um, here's a copy of that Gremlins print without the without the key plate. Without the key. Yeah, <laughs> which is like pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Well, it does, does it have the black layer? It doesn't have um, the black. No, it doesn't either, have right? the black either. Yeah. It, it's probably. Let's see. Here's the list of all the colors. Um, yeah, I think it's everything except for the the two line line layers. Um, yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. That's a giant stack of scratch and dents to be dealt with at a later date. <laughs> um, most of what's in here is oh, there's that. I guess there's a lot of J Ryan prints in here. <laughs> uh, and here's our, like, sort of our mail order zone, I guess. We've got, like, all the um, little postcards and postcard packs and tea and uh, tubes that are, like, ready ready to go. Some records. Um, and, uh, yeah. What else is cool? I think, I think you cover everything. Okay. There's lots of storage. There's the, the, that cool couch up there is pretty the, nice. Yeah, the couch is pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, that was... Uh, that replaced the mattress that's up here, which I had... Like I, I, I was living in here for a couple months after the apartment that I was in got struck by lightning seven times and caught fire. <laughs> um, so, so I couldn't live there anymore. And moved here for a little bit um, until Jessica came out. Uh, but yeah, that I don't know. That loft is awesome. They had, you know, we were hanging curtains off of the HVAC there so that when Justin would come in in the morning, I could just stay sleeping and, and uh, be undisturbed. Um, this is a this paper shelf actually came from Minneapolis. We that was one of the things that we loaded up on the truck. Um, you know, I, I built a steel pipe ladder once this was all going so that we could get up and down easily. Um, it's only sort of a death trap. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually a lot of this stuff kind of came from Minneapolis, like the, that big shelf um, somehow, and uh, all of our tables and everything, they've been modified here and there. Um, like this end I'm suspending with chains so that I can tuck, there's no, no good place to put this gigantic printer. Um, and, uh, what is I've, I've I've been curious what that is. This thing does this just catch the it, film? Or? Yeah, that's all it does really. It, it's just there to catch stuff. We usually we usually try to uh, um, have a handle on it and like grab grab the the prints as they're coming off, just because you know we're kind of nervous that the the ink is still wet on there and we don't need it sliding all over weird stuff. But this is actually like this is the base that the, the printer is supposed to sit on if it were being freestanding. Um, so I, <laughs> I don't know. Sense. It's just there. It, that'll probably get replaced by another flat file at some point. Um, it's functional in spirit, at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if we are running a million things or whatever and, like, doing all sorts of stuff, it, it does catch the prints <laughs> as, they, as they come off. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I feel like there's, like, a whole bunch of weird stuff in here, but... Um, I don't know what to... There's Justin's press. Um, it's tucked away at the moment. Um, uh, here's the the lighting setup that we, we made. Um, also, actually, I'll turn I'll turn the lights off and show you our concert venue light. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's pretty great. This is where the concert um, was held. <clears throat> I mean, I wonder... I don't know how this is going to show up, but... Um, this was essentially... Like, that's... This is... This is what the lights are like when I'm here all night drawing. I just you turn have, them out. Yeah, I turn them off and just have like the really soft lights. Um, it it kind of it feels nice and isolating, and it's not as harsh as that having the the fluorescence and everything. Having those lights pointed directly at the screens does yeah. that serve a purpose or? Yeah, actually, totally it does. Um, we. We tend to underexpose our screens on the light table um, for, for a few different really boring reasons, but afterwards, 
that means that they need to have more light to like bake in the stencil. Um, so we put them there and, and let them sit underneath fans to dry the water off, and then the the lights kind of do the last the last like steps of of baking the, the stencil in, um, and that that allows us. I, I don't think that it would break down on press if we didn't do that, but more importantly, it it allows like the whatever chemical thing needs to happen with the emulsion when it's when it's drying, so that we can take the stencil out easier, like the. the the salt weird compound that we we use to break down the the emulsion um, reacts better if the the emulsion's thoroughly exposed. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we we don't really have problems with it breaking down as we're printing. It's just mostly like if it's ever hard to wash out, that's kind of why. Why? Yeah. Um, and we used to set the screens up back on the light table for a little while and just leave them there for a half hour or so, but you know. If like if Jess is here and she's working on something and I'm working on something and Justin's working on something or whatever, like we we have to be super con conscious of you know everybody's traffic and stuff. So I just set that up as a way to not tie up the light table if you know if people needed to use it. Um, but yeah, that's what that. It's just the post exposure, um, and uh, those are some of the chemicals that we we use to clean the screens out there. As far as I understand, they're actually made at uh, Northwest Graphic Supply Company in Minneapolis. It's like their weird proprietary thing that they, they make. And uh, I don't know. Other people use other stuff. It's always worked out well for us. Um, oh, I, there's more stuff to show you guys. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, this is like the shelf of things that. Well, I mean, it's largely a bookshelf, I guess, but like these like little shelves here is the weird archive of like things that we've made or things books that we've been printed in um and musical equipment um this is some of Ju justin like plays drums in the empty room next door sometimes and this is my my keyboard amp from when i was in in punk bands as a tiny little child um and then our our binding equipment for when we make those test print books and um for uh when we eventually start making planners and things. Um, Whose skateboard is that? Is that Justin? That's mine. Mitch, I, Mitch bought that for me so that um, I could cruise around when we'd go on road trips and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, when when I'm out with those guys, we stop at rest stops and just kind of roll around for a little while to stretch our legs. Justin's got one here. That's yeah. He kind of religiously takes it to go down the hall to uh, go to the bathroom. Um, yeah. Skate, skates back and forth. Oh. I'm not as good. I'm not as like disappointed. I'm also not very good at skateboarding. So, um, yeah, Ryan Dugan print for good good measure. Um, yeah, and uh, here's our paper. It's a giant um, 760 pound stack of paper that needs to get dealt with. Um, and uh, is that is this something? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I guess we should probably wrap it up. The dude's on the right. way to grab all of our things. Any like quick question, real quick, before yeah. we jump up? From people? Yeah, like Alan's. I know Alan's on. There's a couple other people. that have been jumping off them. Uh, huh? James Brock and Alan. Yeah, I hope that was okay. I hope that's an okay. Yeah, dude, tour. totally. Okay. Um, and and <laughs> I'll upload this to YouTube and put a link in the group just for people to watch it later. Um, yeah, he said, nope, thanks for the tour. Sweet. Well, thanks, guys, for, for joining. So we're going to jump off now because Dan's got to move. Yeah. <laughs> All right.